Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today in War Thunder it is time to have a look at some of the ideas which were passed on to the developers in September of 2019. Today we're going to be looking over the aviation part of things and the next video will be ground forces and of course uh, there is actually a naval forces and a helicopters part plus some general stuff and since there's a ton of things uh, this uh, time I might actually split this into five separate videos so one for aviation one for ground, one for naval, one for helicopters, and then the other one for miscellaneous. Uh, but anyway, once again, thank you to Coke Spray for putting together this list for us and also passing all the stuff on to the developers. It's always nice to see that community feedback is getting passed on in a public way. Uh, it kind of gives people an inkling of at least what's been uh, what's been seeing. And I remember uh, a few months ago, what was passed along was the KA50 and the KA-52. And now, well, we have a deadlock for the KA-50, so uh, just understand that the work that you do uh, when it comes to this past the developer's stuff does matter, uh, even if a lot of people say it doesn't. Of course it does uh, when it comes to gathering information. So the first one to have a look at is from Triangle who has spelt triangle wrong or is trying to uh, just be different <laughs> so triangle today is talking about the curtis a18 shrike 2 now this is a twin engine ground attack aircraft from the 1930s in the u.s and uh, it was one of those uh, ones which in the mid 30s the united states army air corps actually really liked you know it, uh, they basically wanted a vehicle which could carry a decent amount of guns and also a decent amount of bombs which would overall be kind of light at the same time so the Curtis YA-14 prototype which emerged in 1935 uh, became the basis for the A-18 model it was the first single mission attack aircraft that was ever used by the US and it had a very slender fuselage thin nose and also uh, sleek stream lining the A-14 though just like a lot of planes at the time the main issue it had was its power. It was powered by two 775 horsepower right whirlwind radial engines, but this was not enough uh, to be able to give it enough power to uh, be seen as adequate. It had a maximum speed of 254 miles per hour, uh, which was faster than the P-26 P shooter at the time uh, by 20 miles per hour. But the problem is uh, when you have these machines, uh, they eventually get up engine, they eventually get up gunned, but eventually there's normally some kind of other machine which does their job better and that's exactly what happened to the Curtis A18 pretty much what happened uh, with it was uh, it got uh, morphed into the Y1A18 uh, which had better engines the Wright R1820-47 radials which had 850 horsepower apiece and also, uh, on top of this, the main issue it had, even though it was successful in testing, generally people liked the aircraft, is that it ran into uh, the problem of lack of funds, and also the switch of project towards the Douglas A-20 Havoc, which was under uh, design at the time. Then, uh, in 1937, uh, there was some tests done with it, uh, with the 8th Attack Squadron and then the 3rd Attack Group at Barksdale Field. They won some awards and all of this stuff. And then it was uh, used, uh, and, well, it was used in general uh, use when it came to the squadrons. But the problem is, as I said, it was replaced by early model A-20 Havocs in 1941. So it had a pretty short life of maybe five to six years from first prototype to death but overall it would be a nice uh, machine to see in game depending on which one you wanted to pick you could have the early model which would have not great engines uh, you could have the later model which was slightly more up gunned or you could have the Y1A18 which is the one we're seeing here it had access of course to the two 850 horsepower engines the three bladed prop and it had four uh, forward firing 30 cals which were centrally mounted on top of an uh, one uh, one thirty cal machine gun uh, in defence, and then it could carry four hundred pounds worth of bombs in two wing bomb uh, wing bays and two hundred pounds of bombs or chemical smoke tanks under the wings. So this in game 
would definitely feel like very much a light bomber. Uh, I would see it at, you know, rank 1, and it would basically be like the Breda uh, that you see for the Italians. Uh, maybe a little bit more, you know, speed and acceleration around the place, but very similar to it. I would love to see it. Uh, it's another one of these 30s aircraft, which cries to be in-game. The next one is a German aircraft, which is actually American. So this is the F-104G Starfighter, the first uh, aircraft that Germany used, which was Mach 2 capable. Now, the F-104 is, of course, uh, basically a flying interceptor. It's a flying dart, uh, which has access to 20mm Vulcans and also air-to-air -air missiles and all of this wonderful stuff. But uh, in the 1950s, uh, Germany wanted to adopt a new fighter jet, and uh, there was a bunch of different ones which were around. The F-11, F-1F, the Mirage 3A, and, of course, the F-104 from America. The Germans wanted it to be able to carry nuclear ordnance, be able to reach Mach 2, and also have the all-weather capability. Now, there's a little bit of funny business, at least uh, depending on what sources you believe, maybe a little bit of bribery, maybe a, a few things uh, changing hands uh, for the Germans to uh, get the contract for the F-104 to be able to use it, uh, meaning that there is a little bit of uh, speculation of foul play when it comes to the Germans Germans actually using this vehicle because what the Germans wanted uh, the F-104 didn't really fit so the F-104 was completely designed to be a fast quick reaction uh, fast uh, rate of climb, incredibly quick machine which could intercept high altitude uh, nuclear bearing bombers. Uh, that was basically its job. It was designed to be just a dart so it could just fly really quickly and uh, intercept stuff incredibly quickly just to stop some form of... Uh, it's basically in a way uh, a way to stop nuclear armed heavy bombers uh, at high altitude. But when you look at the German specification they wanted a vehicle which was more designed for the fighter-bomber role. So therefore, when you look at something like the Mirage 3, it would make a little bit more sense if they, you know, went with that, uh, if we're doing a little bit of post-hoc work here. But for some reason, they decided to go for the F-104G, which wasn't exactly designed for the role. And this led to a lot of problems. Uh, so it did fit, you know, some of the ideas. Uh, it was Mach 2 capable. It was, the F-104G was all-weather capable and also it could carry nuclear ordnance. The main problem it had though was when it came to the fighter bomber roll because it's pretty much just designed like a needle. Oh, by the way, this is from Stuhlfleisch, uh, so thank you for making this article. Uh, the the F-104G, because it's more of a needle and uh, it's designed for very high altitude speed, the main problem it had was uh, when it was coming down at specific angles to be able to ground attack, because it was supposed to be a fighter bomber, it wouldn't be able to lift itself up, and therefore a lot of German pilots uh, unfortunately died uh, from flying these things. It has one of the highest... Uh, death rates is the wrong word, but it has one of the highest accident or crash rates uh, when it comes to any aircraft uh, because of this fact. And a lot of people uh, put it down to the pilots uh, misusing the machine. I definitely think uh, you could make that argument, but you could also say that the tactics behind the use of this thing uh, were definitely not good either. You know, being the fact that uh, it was supposed to be a vehicle which was more designed for high altitude intercepting and they were trying to use it as this weird pseudo strike fighter uh, which generally is not a great idea so yeah uh, when it comes to in game it would be the first German Mach uh, 2 capable aircraft it could uh, come alongside the Phantom and also the MiG-21 as uh, some kind of pseudo com competitor, and also it could carry a bunch of different ordnance. So mainly it has, of course, the Vulcan Gatling cannon, the Sidewinders, only AIM-9Bs though, uh, the fact that it has two AS-30 guided air-to-surface missiles, it has, of course, the Penguin guided air-to-ship missiles, and some unguided rockets and bombs as well.
well. Now, I don't think it will get the nuclear stuff, but if we look at everything else, it looks kind of nice uh, when it comes to its secondary ordnance. So, it is definitely a plane to look for. And if we're talking about Germany getting into the Mach 2 stage, just like uh, two other nations have, this would be the prime choice for that. The next vehicle is the IL-2T. Now, as we've talked about before, the T, uh, when it comes to uh, Soviet vehicles, basically in English standing for torpedo, uh, because everything with a T on it uh, is a torpedo version of a similar plane. We even have it in-game, the 214T, right? So this is from Alpha Noodle, and it talks about uh, the IL-2T, and actually gives a really nice little rendition of the il 2 overall history if you want to read it here uh, basically talking about how useful it was as a soviet attack vehicle it had a ridiculous amount of variants it had 183 produced models uh, meaning that you know they those were different uh, models from each other and the two that we're looking at today are the two versions of the il2t so the main difference between the other il2s that you'll see in game and the il2t's is that the il2t's uh, they had both armaments and armor protection significantly reduced from your standard il2 they also had the addition of a 450 millimeter torpedo that you can see here here at an angle and also a hundred liter fuel tank uh, so increasing its range but it wasn't able to carry rockets or bombs because of this fact and also uh, it did have the back gunner so uh, it was uh, kind of an, an interesting uh, an interesting little bridge I suppose between something like an IL-2 and an IL-2M but you do have uh, two versions of it you got the IL-2T with the normal wings that you can see here and then the swept wings one which is very similar to the IL-2M that we have in game so there was both of these uh, when it comes to the T variant but the main thing to understand is the offensive weaponry apart from the torpedo is significantly reduced compared to every other IL-2 you'll be used to so we even though you get this nice little back gunner at the back, which uh, is, uh, you know, it has itself a 12.7 millimeter beresin, the actual offensive armament is only two 762 chicasses. So no 20 millimeters, no 23 millimeters, no 12.7s, just two 762s, and that's it. So you're going to be significantly reduced in the offensive armament game, unless you are playing naval uh, with the torpedo on board. And uh, also, uh, it had access, as I said, to the fuel tanks in the wings, which should make it a little bit more, well, heavier when it comes to its roll rate. So overall, it's a cool little uh, plane, and I do think it should be added now that naval is around. But don't expect, you know, it to be a mainstay for other game modes, uh, which are not naval, because, well, there will just be better options in the form of the IL-2 and the IL-2M. The next uh, vehicle is from Achilla Chrysatos, and this is the Blackburn Buccaneer S2. Now, the Buccaneer is one of those interesting aircraft that Britain made, which to me is a beautiful aircraft, but a lot of people will look at it and think it like think about it being quite ugly. I personally think it's uh, got some lovely curves to it, just generally uh, an interesting idea, and it was also another one of these vehicles which was uh, not Mach 1 capable, <laughs> which uh, we've talked about a lot when it comes to uh, these vehicles. So you can see here, uh, 1,112 kilometers per hour or 691 miles per hour at maximum speed uh, so it's uh, it's another one of these sub uh, supersonic vehicles or sub Mach 1 vehicles that the uh, British had we pretty much just went from you know 0.9 Mach I suppose you'd call it or 0.95 or 0.98 to about 2.2 like that that was the jump that the British made and also uh, the Blackburn Buccaneer is another one of these strike fighters uh, so you know how we've talked about before with a bunch of other aircraft uh, that the British made which were kind of these 
these weird multi-role aircraft ideas. So they weren't just pure fighters, they weren't just pure attackers. Instead, you would have this strike fighter idea, which was designed to annihilate whatever it could find on the ground, and then afterwards, it would be able to be a pseudo-fighter. That was basically its job. And uh, the Buccaneer is just another one of these naval aircraft, which is designed for that. Very similar to some that we have in-game, actually. The Seahawk is a great example of this, which was added a few updates ago. It's one of these aircraft which is annihilate whatever is there first, and then we can maybe do a bit when it comes to the fighter support idea. The Buccaneer uh, was uh, designed in... Well, it had a bunch of interesting like uh, developments to it when it came to actual designs, you know. Uh, it uh, had stuff such as, uh, you can see here, the new manufacturing techniques, such as machining skin panels for solid billets, and also it had the uh, basic, a very basic uh, adaptation of the area rule design. Uh, when it came to its fuselage. And uh, another thing which a lot of people don't talk about with the Buccaneer, uh, which if you actually look at the standard requirement uh, that was uh, designed for it, it was supposed to have, uh, well, uh, I shouldn't say that, but the naval staff requirement for uh, what they wanted, it outlined a machine which uh, called for an overload takeoff weight of 45,000 pounds, range of 400 miles. It would be carrier capable dimensions as well as wing folding capabilities the book and it fits all of these and then additional provisions called for included uh, or called for included a primarily nuclear armament predominantly for guided green cheese or free fall red beard tactical bombs i love the names of uh, nuclear bombs even though they are completely ridiculous and also a secondary armament was to include various air to surface rockets missiles bombs and even four aid and cannons so a bunch of people put forward proposals Blackburn won with the Buccaneer, but there is a key difference between what you see here from the requirements and the Buccaneer itself. It could carry air-to-surface missiles, it could carry air-to-air -air missiles, it could carry the nuclear ordnance, it could carry bombs, but it doesn't have any guns. Now this is the problem. So the Buccaneer would have access to pretty good sidewinders, uh, but it would not have access to any guns. And uh, since it's one of those aircraft which would be this uh, strike fighter idea, I'm just wondering like how it would fit in the game. Like what BR would you put it as because of the fact it doesn't have that primary armament? You can see here at the bottom uh, when it comes to uh, the armament, it could carry, as you can see, the bombs. Uh, you have a plethora of different bombs from 2000s to 500s. Hundreds. Then you have access to a bunch of rockets as well, including glowworm rockets, and then AIM-9Gs or AIM-9L sidewinders, but only one of them. Then you've got the AGM-12 bullpups, the Martels, and the Sea Eagles. So all of these would be incredibly potent, depending on what game mode you are playing this thing in. But one of the big issues that the Buccaneer has is its speed, and also its lack of offensive uh, weaponry against uh, other air... Uh, well, I suppose aviation targets, you would call it. Then also it's G limitations. So we could only pull six Gs. Uh, that was it. And in game, if you can only pull six Gs at, well, let's say this thing's around 9.0 or something like that, uh, it's just going to get eaten uh, by pretty much everything. It's not quick enough. Its acceleration isn't good enough. It was made for a very specific role when it came to real life. And in game, that role is still not an imagined thing. It, it just doesn't exist. This multi-role idea. You are either in game, you have to be incredibly dedicated to one specific role if you're an aircraft. And the Buccaneer is not that. It's just a mixture or a conglomeration of more than one. The next vehicle is the Mitsubishi G3M2 Model 22 Neil. Or the Nell, sorry. Is it Nell? Yes, it's Nell, sorry. This is from Alpha Noodle, and it talks about the Mitsubishi G3M. It was a medium uh, torpedo bomber uh, from the Japanese in the mid 1930s. They made about a thousand of these things, and overall, it's uh, pretty much your standard run of the mill uh, bomber. It has a 20mm armament in a rear dorsal turret, and then four 7.7mm machine guns in the cockpit in, uh, all over the place. So when it comes to you know the you know the key twenty one 
where it just has guns all over the cockpit. Uh, that's pretty much the same here. So it has two in the left and right side positions, a retractable forward a dorsal turret, and also a little uh, a little turret as well. It could carry 800 kilos uh, worth of bombs or one aerial torpedo. And uh, it is just your pretty much run-of-the-mill Japanese bomber. Incredibly large wingspan, quite slow uh, when we look at it overall. Max cruise speed of 375 kilometers an hour. But you've got to remember, this is a mid-1930s aircraft. So comparing it to something like the Curtis Shrike that we saw earlier, that's not too bad, you know, especially for the size of, you know, the, this, uh, this bomber, which uh, is sat... Uh, with two engines of 1,061 horsepower each. The 20mm is in a bit of a weird uh, dorsal turret though, and I wish I could get a better picture of this. Uh, you can see how much of a girth that this 20mm has, and it just seems kind of odd. Whoops, it just seems kind of odd having this thing, and then also having a turret behind it. So it just seems to kind of defeat uh, the purpose of the 20mm. But overall, it's another one of these Japanese bombers of mid 1930s descent. Would be lovely to see it in game, uh, just because of its uh, general history, and also because uh, we already have a bunch of them in the game, and they're just fun to use. Uh, as long as you don't get into that like key 49 area with the japanese bombers they're generally quite fun the next one is from ufo interceptor and he's here to talk about the uh the hawk 75 so in i can't remember what update it was it might have been last year it might have been this year a bunch of uh, h-75s or hawks were added to the french tech tree and uh, they're very similar to p-36s apart from they were designed uh, from a french point of view so french guns uh, french uh, cockpits and i believe some of them uh, had other things when it comes to france uh, maybe slightly different engine all of this stuff uh, when it comes to other nations uh, such as uh, china or the uh, ROCAF, uh, the uh, ROCAF uh, at the time, which was of course a pre, uh, you know, pre World War Two. So we're talking about late 1930s. The uh, Chinese actually operated a bunch of these Hawks, and they built them themselves as well. They were built and operated under license in China, meaning that uh, they there is no reason why they shouldn't be in the you know in the Chinese tech tree. We have a Finnish H75. We have a bunch of French ones. Why not have some Chinese ones as well uh, to be able to uh, pick alongside them? So the ideas that UFO uh, intercepts are putting forward. The first one is the H-75A5. This is uh, very similar to the A4 that we already have in game, the French one, and it has the same engine, but it was built under license in China. Uh, the production later moved to India, which is kind of interesting, and some were absorbed into the RAF as the Mohawk 4. But this is incredibly similar to the one that we have in the uh, French tech tree. It has access to six 30 caliber machine guns and it should have exactly the same performance as the one in the French tech tree. The next one is a bit more interesting. So this is the Hawk 75M. This has fixed landing gear on it and also has a different engine. The Wright R1820 Cyclone engine that were built by Curtis and also the Central Aircraft Manufacturing Company in China. And uh, so once again, these were produced, built, and operated all by China, so therefore it should be in the game. This has access to four 30 caliber machine guns and should be a little bit slower than the one we just talked about. So the next one is the Hawk 75H. This was uh, flown by Colonel Claire Le Cheneau, uh, who was the founder of the Flying Tigers, and the idea is why not put it in as kind of a lower tier premium uh, alongside some of the other H-75s uh, in order to be put into the uh, Chinese tech tree. The main difference between this and the one before is it has access to a 50 cal and a 30 cal, so instead of 430s, just 130 and 150. The last plane which is in this list is the H-75Q, and the H-75Q is definitely different uh, to some of the other ones. This is the first H-75 that I've seen which has kind of a bonkers armament to it. 
So uh, this was uh, what would be classed as, I suppose, a late variant of the H75, uh, 1937, uh, which uh, this was supposed to be used, and it had similar uh, armament to the XP36F, and uh, the XP36F, which was a production P36A, fitted with two 23mm under the wings, the Madsen Auto Cannons, and uh, so therefore, they, the issue that this plane had was that that the performance of it, uh, because of the gun's recoil and the low speed of the plane, it never really got out of, you know, <laughs> never really got out of the uh, the starting blocks. But at the same time, you are pretty much just taking a Hawk fuselage and wings, strapping to 23 millimeters to it with an R1820 engine with 875 horsepower, plus you're keeping the 230 cows as well, you know, which I'm guessing is the uh, nose-mounted one, and just saying have at it uh, so I feel like that would be a bit of fun maybe some form of premium it would feel incredibly sluggish uh, when it comes to general performance because one if, if you have a look at the I I-16 right so the I-16 generally works pretty well up to like the type 18 when you get the type 24 with the 20 millimeters it loses a lot of its maneuverability and I feel like that would be the same for the H75Q even though it would be really fun having it attached to two 20 23 millimeters. So yeah, uh, definitely looking forward to that one. The last but not least is from Milo Cat. Uh, this is talking about the SM78, and it is the last by well, it's the last biplane boat plane that the Italians used. Uh, the it was the uh, it was a long range maritime reconnaissance aircraft bomber and was the last biplane flying boat used by the Regia Aeronautica. It was replaced uh, in 1938 uh, by the Kant Z501, which is a plane a lot of people have asked for when it comes to uh, the game. But uh, it was built between 1932 and 35, and in service, as I said, until 1938. So it was about 48 of them made, so around about 50. And uh, it has access to the Isotta Fraccini Asso 750R 18-cylinder W configuration, 850 horsepower engine. It's a two-bladed wooden propeller and uh, would eventually move into a four-bladed metal propeller, but you can see it's very similar to another vehicle that we already have in game, the MBR2, uh, meaning that there is at least a place, uh, some kind of maybe event vehicle as this. It does have access to two 7.7mm Lewis machine guns, one in the nose and one in the uh, dorsal turret on, on the back, and up to 700 kilos worth of bombs. I mean, sure, if uh, maybe if your pilot weighs absolutely nothing, but I feel like that might be a little bit heavy for a machine like this. It was an incredibly uh, slow machine, 245 kilometers an hour, uh, but that's what you expect from a machine which is pretty much just a flying uh, pencil attached with a ton of bombs. So here's the four-bladed propeller uh, that we've talked about, and also the cockpit seat, which is really interesting. Uh, there are some really nice pictures uh, that you can see here with all the instruments and everything like that attached to it. Uh, so, as I said, last but not uh, least, it's definitely an interesting vehicle. Would love to see it in game. It's either probably going to be a rank 1 premium or a rank 1 event vehicle. It's not going to have much use uh, because of the fact that it was a reconnaissance vehicle in real life and also you know, when it comes to bombing and stuff, lower tiers, you're looking at stuff like the Farman to be much more useful than something like this. But at least it gives another option, especially when it comes to Italy, if their naval stuff comes out, it means that you can land and cap, uh, uh, cap points and things, which is always really fun. So overall, some great picks here, some new, some old, some modern, some past. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank Ambrosius McClellan, B. Young, Blackie, Daniel Stanton, John Ryman, Joseph Anders, Martinez, Mopar1969, Moxie, Super Cacti, Yuyans Terry, and Elove Goats, and of course, Seductive Trashcan, for supporting the channel.